Y'all remember this? I see a lot of guys in the NBA getting triple doubles with assists. Ain't too many, ain't nobody doing it with blocks. So I know I had to come out here and um, nobody's doing it with blocks. Mm. Well, trash talk there from Hassan Whiteside, letting him know you can get the triple double with blocks as one of your stats. And now he's letting the media know he doesn't want to be compared to DeAndre Jordan. When asked by the Miami Herald if their games are similar, he said, quote, no, he catches lobs, I shoot jumpers, catch lobs, block shots. I do a lot, he just catches lobs. Now, that sure sounds like trash talk to me. But this morning, Whiteside walked it back a bit in a text to ESPN's Jeff Goodman today. He said, quote, DeAndre, one of the top centers in the NBA. My comments were misinterpreted. No, they wasn't. How. Um, but he is a really good player. No, he wasn't. No? No. <laughs> And in, in, in some, in some part of that, he told the truth. Right. I mean, it, it's facts. He is more skilled offensively than DeAndre Jordan. Yes, he can shoot a little 14, 15 foot mm-hmm. jumper. DeAndre Jordan can't do that. Um, where I disagree is he just doesn't catch lobs. I mean, DeAndre Jordan is a huge value on the defensive end. I mean, he's yes, he's he could easily be defensive player of the year every year. Uh, he's a hell of a rebounder. So. Um, no, he just doesn't catch his love. Most player, most coaches and GMs in this league would take DeAndre Jordan Absolutely. ahead of Hassan Whiteside because DeAndre Jordan knows how to fill a role and be a team player. That's Hassan Whiteside's biggest detriment, and it's why the Clippers are a lot better team than the Heat. I mean, they're not comparable talent-wise, but DeAndre Jordan does a lot better at doing that, and maybe Whiteside will get there. One thing they do have in common, they both got offered a max by the Dallas Mavericks and both turned them down. <laughs> so maybe the Mavericks would be the best ask on who was better or better. Well, I would say I would say DeAndre Jordan. Right. Just the impact that he has. Yeah. And just the maturity factor yeah. right now. And you're right. That might change. But at the moment, I do want to move on to, to the bizarre situation in Houston. This is just, you and I have been talking about this for days. <laughs> Last night, the Rockets renounced their rights to Donatus Montiunas, who now becomes an unrestricted free agent. This is less than a week after they signed Montiunas to a four-year, $31 million deal. And let's not forget, three weeks after they matched an offer sheet for less money from the Nets and into the interim, Montiunas has failed physicals. He's refused to report to practice. I mean, the list is its ridiculous. My, my question is... Uh... He is a pretty damn good player. Yeah. He, he, he can play. What went wrong last year that this guy doesn't want to be a part of this organization? Well, I'll tell you. I'll give Wait. you the answer. He got traded last year. They Don't traded forget about away this. to Detroit. To Detroit, and the trade got voided. This has been the strangest situation in the 15 years I've covered the NBA in terms of contractual negotiation. He has made some tactical mistakes here. Some? He mishandled, <laughs> he mishandled the offer sheet. He mishandled how he came back to the Rockets. But I'm gonna tell you this, he's a restricted, unrestricted free agent now. He's been dealing with restricted free agency, basically which he would probably call hell for the last few months. He could still end up winning. He could still end up walking away with a deal that was richer. But you know what? The Rockets are competing to get a top four seed in the West. They could have used this player. Yes. And I understand that his back is, is an issue, but they, this may not end up working out better for either of them I don't in the think long he run. Wants to be there. And and the I think poor that's pretty happy. Well, yeah, he's he, he's not there anymore. And poor Nets, by the way, who did all the work on the competing offer sheet, and they are the one team who can now not sign him as an unrestricted free agent. Before we go to break, I want to talk about Kawhi Leonard, the two-time Defensive Player of the Year. There is a super interesting article on CBSSports.com pointing out how the Spurs defense actually gets statistically worse when Kawhi is on the floor. I know that sounds impossible, but it is true. They are giving up 13 more points per 100 possessions when Kawhi is out on the floor. And Tracy, are you surprised at this? Or once you break it down and look at the clips, you see it? No, I I think once you break it down and look at the clips, you obviously see why they are a, uh, I guess, give up more points while he's out there. Because he's not in the plays. If you look at this right here, this is just great coaching. Now he starts on the ball and the, the play is going away from Kawhi Leonard, so he's away from the play. You can't have no impact if you're on the weak side. They just keep marooning him, is that right? Absolutely, and this is a smart thing to do because the guy is such a great defender, he impacts the game on both ends of the ball, of the floor. And right here, he's just been a spectator. And Hey, I can that was what? Rondo taking a jumper. That was good defense, actually. <laughs> uh, this is the charge for Tim Duncan leaving because they've had to change their defensive strategy so much with Gasol and Marcus Aldridge. But if I was Draymond Green, who wants that Defensive Player of the Year award from Kawhi, I'd be printing this article out, passing it out to voters. Yeah. (laughs) 
I mean, it, it is interesting. It, I, I got to think that Pop, as a tactician, is going to then figure out a way to right. sort of reintegrate. It's a crazy him. number, though. I mean, it it's is. bizarre. And I, I appreciate you pointing out, Tracy, but I'm going to tell you, on its face, it's one of the strangest statistics I've seen. It really is. Right? I don't buy into it, though. I'm and not. obviously, he's still, no one's going to sit there and say, oh, Kawhi isn't good for right. your defense. Right. And the Spurs, obviously, here, but we're still fifth in the league in defense. Now. Yeah, and they're 21 okay. and 5 right now, but. It is a quirk, and it is fascinating to look at. We are going to take a quick break, but first it is time for our distant replay. This is the one and only J.R. Smith from this date in 2010. Not really for anyone. So you kind of see how it's affected Tony Parker. Oh, awesome. Oh. 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 Larry Nance before Larry oh. Nance. <laughs> look at Bello. <laughs> I love J.R. Seriously, I love and J.R. Smith playing off basketball. the wrong leg. That's <laughs> That's incredible. He jumps off the right leg for a right-hander. Oh, he should have got on the rim. He is stronger jumping off the wrong leg. Amazing. They are. Yesterday was such an emotional day for all of us. Just as we were starting our show, uh, the news broke of our friend Craig Sager's death. And I have to say, though, it was cathartic in the hours after we got off the air to see the tributes pouring in. It was amazing, right? I mean, words of respect from every major figure in the NBA, the vice president of the United States, billboards, and then as evening fell and the game started, there were the Sager Strong signs. I mean, just everywhere. The Milwaukee Bucks ran out for warm-ups and Sager t-shirts. Greg Popovich, who, you know, for years had that Statler and Waldorf thing going on with Craig, was visibly shaken, and he spoke before the game. If any of us could display half the courage he has, uh, to stay on this planet, uh, to live every life as if it's his last, uh, we'd, we'd be well off. Uh, we, all, we all miss him very much. It, it was really amazing. In arena after arena, they celebrated Craig Sager. Steve Kerr led Warriors fans in not a moment of silence, as he put it, but a moment of joy, which was amazing. And, and Kerr, of course, used to work with Craig at TNT. And as the night wore on, he made it clear where his thoughts were. I'm not thinking much about this game, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm thinking about Craig and his family, and um, I'm glad we could honor him, but um, we're going to miss him. As usual, the inside the NBA crew was also stellar. Right? They just showed such incredible grace in the face of so much sadness. Everybody dies, but very few people live. And Craig Sega lived, uh, and he fought uh, a, a valiant, valiant battle. You know, most people get one day of tributes, but day two this morning, the tributes kept coming for Craig. Here was Kobe Bryant on Mike and Mike. He was one of the rare reporters that could come up to an athlete and the athlete feel completely comfortable um, to, to be able to be open with him. And uh, that's a rare gift to have. And look, for many people, the last time they saw Craig was at the ESPYs over the summer. But he did make a video just a couple weeks ago, and I think he'd want us to play it to let fans know he had seen the outpouring of love directed at him. Hi, NBA fans. I'm Craig Sager. I'm Riley Sager. And I'm Ryan Sager. We'd like to thank our NBA family for their unwavering support in our fight against leukemia. The owners, front office, coaches, players, and in particular, the fans. Look, seeing Craig like that, it isn't easy. But that is not how I'm going to remember Craig Sager. For me, it will always be the personal moments. The first time I met Craig when he tapped me on the shoulder at a basketball game in Washington. Or the first time he introduced me to his wife, Stacy. He was so proud to be married to her. He, he acted like he was having me meet the Pope. There were the chats we had before games at arenas. Then, of course, post-game, those conversations may have continued at bars all over America. Um, we were often interrupted by fans who, who really just wanted to get near him and get a picture. But many times, Craig, he, he wouldn't just stop and, and do the camera click. He'd have the person sit down. He'd invite them to just come talk sports with us because he loved it all. And he wanted to soak in absolutely everything and everyone he could. And in the end, that is what I will take away from my time on this earth with Craig, that there is joy everywhere. You just have to be willing to open your eyes, see all the colors. What about you, Tracy? And all the colors. All those miss. crazy <laughs> colors. For, for me, uh, there's a couple, couple things. Uh, number one, as a NBA player, uh, for my, my being drafted, shaking the commissioner's hand, then my first interview is Craig Sager. 
Um, you that, made it, that, baby. Yeah, what? That stands out. And then uh, back in December, like the, I talked about this yesterday, my greatest game as an NBA player, um, when I scored 13 points in 35 seconds against San Antonio, and uh, just one of the, the, the most memorable comebacks in NBA history. And I really couldn't control myself because I couldn't believe what I just, you know, did. And, you know, who comes up to me? It was, it was Craig Sager on this uh, historic night. And, again, he will always be with me because, you know, he interviewed me on the best night of my NBA career. We, we have the interview, actually. I think oh, really? you guys can play it. <laughs> Do we? <laughs> You guys were so far behind. They had the ball a few seconds. They turn it over. How did you get the ball? What were you thinking? Well, we were supposed to just trap and uh, go for a steal. Unfortunately, got it. You know, fortunate enough, the guy slipped. Ball came right to me. And the uh, only thing I was thinking about, I didn't want to tie the game. So I was thinking about getting up a three. Got it up. Ball game. I, 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 I never been a part of anything like this. So. You got it. <laughs> All right, Blake, I hope you get your chance to get to look at the replay, but that's why you're the NBA scoring champ. I appreciate it, Kurt. That's so nice, uh, right? Yeah. I don't know what's better. He doesn't better. stop looking at the replay. He watches the replay every day. Well, I yeah. don't know what's better, the joy on your face as you were talking to Craig or the pout on Craig Bobovich. <laughs> <laughs> that was <laughs> classic. Captured there for a moment. <laughs> Back in 2012, also involved Popovich, that was the night where the Spurs rested their star player, sent him home on a Southwest Airlines flight from, from Miami. Right, right. It was supposed to be the big ma- rematch, right? Big rematch of the finals, and it was on TNT. And so during the game, David Stern finds the Spurs $250,000. Doesn't wait till the next day, <laughs> during like the second quarter. And so after the game, we're in the hallway, and we're like, how are we going to ask this question? Are we going to ask him about the fine? What are we going to do? And Craig says, I'll take care of this. <laughs> <laughs> Strides in, asks Pop two questions, gets absolutely no answers. Pop walks back into the locker room, says, Get, you know, beat it. And I was like, well, I'm glad Craig did that and I didn't have to do it. <laughs> I mean, it is amazing. And seeing all these memories, right, over the past uh, 24 oh, hours, 12 yeah. hours, however long yeah. it's been, I can't keep track. It feels like a long time. The tributes from his children have been amazing and his family. And, and I think, you know, what we heard Charles Barkley say there in the clip that, you know, this was a guy who lived, who truly lived. We all have a limited amount of time here. We all have a limited amount of influence on the people around us. And the fact that he made the most of every moment that he had, again, long before he was diagnosed with leukemia. This is not something that just popped up when he realized he had he, he was sick. That is something that he influenced a lot of people for such a long time and appreciated life and appreciated the world around him for such a long time. It was truly special. He will be so missed by our NBA family. And we use that expression a lot, but it actually does mean something to the people in and around the game. Craig was such a big part of that family, and he will always be a part of that family going forward. Mislead. It's a make or mislead. Make or miss. It's a make or mislead. It's a make or miss. It's a make or miss. It's a make or mislead. <laughs> Two alley oops to JaVale McGee. McGee made sure Thompson I actually, find him forcibly, basically. You know what? I'm starting to like JaVale McGee with this starting. Group. I don't think Clay liked it at all. Look, look, at, that, look at that high five. Look, was, well, yeah. Clay's not into No it, acknowledgement, man. though. Come on, Clay. <laughs> He's not into JaVale. <laughs> that was unbelievable. Only JaVale can screw up when he did something right. Or and screw up a high five. Miss Hops, 6'11, Joaquin Noah, lost to Jump Ball to 6'3 Steph Curry last night, T Mac. Well, Joe Kim right. is not known to be in a leaper, though. Well, right. Look at this. Now, if, if, he's, if he's not complaining at the officials, he can get, get the ball the, the ball the through. Out. <laughs> but he, I think he did get stolen from him. I think it was a... Oh, no. I, that's, that's I think he was crappy. sleeping on that. Which muscles? Make dimes. Let's see. I, I can't even see what this is. A no-look pass. Jokic. Looks like, uh, Jokic. Looks like the Nuggets, right? Nice ball, big Nicole brother. Jokic. Uh, by the way, look at this pass. It's, it's tough around. on the pass and no look. It's a double word score. You're doing the crossword? Dame, Dame Dollar gave him 40 and 10 last night, though. Yeah. What the well, hell? Defense didn't yeah, help out. Do it all year. Uh, miss, the Lopez brothers, Jabari Parker, jumped oh, on Robin man. Lopez last night. Bad this week for the twins, man. Just one night after his brother was posterized by Larry Nance Jr. That was worse, though. I'm stealing this from Amin El Hassan. The Lopez's are distracted by the release of Rogue One. That's no. Which is coming out tonight. That's not. The the, theaters Disney produced That's Rogue a One. terrible, terrible cross promotion and also <laughs> a terrible analysis. <laughs> 
dare you, Rachel? That is it. How dare you? <laughs> You're gonna get kicked off the show in one minute when it's over. Okay. Make amends. I applaud this after pulling seven. Well, I don't applaud that they pulled Seven Streeter from singing the national anthem back in October, but I do applaud that the Sixers are going to have her back to sing the anthem tonight. This is important. Uh, it's a big deal. Well, I'm glad they're having her back. She is from the home team, but it's not national televised. It is well, not. the game is televised. The anthem, I don't think it's Here's what I know. She ends up winning here because we did. I didn't know who Seven was beforehand. The you an- did. The anthem won't The fact be that you televised. didn't know who Seven Street was is not like it's a surprise good. You know who America. she is now. That's all that matters. <laughs> exactly. She's exactly. my girl it's from Polk Friday. County. Friday. We hope you all have a Pain wonderful City, weekend. Florida. Remember, Craig Sager Florida. in your own way. And watch Tracy McGrady sink some <sighs> baskets. We will see you back on The Jump on Monday. <laughs> that, that was so white. <laughs>